Hi, and uh, welcome back, um, or just welcome if you're joining us. I am doing this little tutorial of some uh, steps that I commonly use because uh, lighting is really tricky and um, I'm still trying to figure out how I like to best light things, but I figured I could share some of the ways that I do nowadays because they've really helped me out. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. So uh, starting off of the scene at hand, I was working on making a train station tunnel. And um, originally I had all these uh, lights on the sides and coming down from the ceiling. And I still do like those to an extent. Um, but I also think that um, they kind of take away the main focus from the entrance here. So for decisions like this, if you want one focal point, a lot of times it's easier to remove most of the lighting. So you really have um, the focus being like down here uh, where I want people to look as opposed to like the chairs in the backgrounds. So I think it looks nicer to have the main light, which is an area light, be down here in the tunnel and bounce through. So you get this light kind of cascading out and it kind of creates a visual kind of uh, gradient. So the farther you get away from the center, the darker it gets. So it kind of leads your eyes to the center because you have this big white space and then the character in the middle, which is a lot darker and is kind of silhouetted. Um, so that is a great way for defining a focal point. Okay, uh, moving on. I modeled this big, uh, <laughs> this big basic kind of mansion hall. It, it just looks like this, kind of in the style of one of those like rich people California beach homes and this is just to point out that using an HDRI image can be really helpful for big scenes like this especially when you have lots of open space and windows like I do here um, in the world settings you can uh, add in a mapping node and move around where you want the sun to be coming in from And if this doesn't work completely for you, one thing I do sometimes is I will open up a HDRI that has not much sun at all. So maybe something like this. This might be a bit extreme, but uh, it'll work for what we want. And then I'll add in a sun lamp and um, have that cast the directional light. So you have just a little bit more uh, freedom. And usually I'll put the value somewhere between uh, 1 and 20. Let's try 10. And this would probably work better if I just um, got off my high horse and used an HDRI that's a little bit more clear sky. I don't know, like this or something. Yeah. Um, but that's one way to do it. Another way you can do is to use the HDRI and use a sun lamp to get extra directional. So if I choose one like this, the sun's over here. So then you just try and like position the sun lamp so it looks like it's coming from where the real world sun is. It's a little bit wonky, but you get what I'm trying to say. Honestly, it can just really help if you if you have an HDRI you like like this, but it's like it's just not cascading light and you just want a little bit more. It's faking it, but a little secret is that faking it is okay. And that's going to be apparent in the next option that I like to do. So Another lighting trick I like to do is uh, faking lighting. Um, for this scene, which I did for a music video, I wanted a clip of the record spinning, a shot with the like fireplace in the background. And um, you have the blue lighting kind of coming in from the window and the orange from the room, which I think came out very pretty. Anyways, um, I wanted this shot of the record player. And the thing is... Um, 
This area of the house is all in shadow if you um, really look at it. This is what it actually looks like. So the records getting lost kind of in the black background and a lot of the um, player tube here is getting lost in the black background. So I actually added in, I added in uh, two lights that should not exist over here. A little point light, which is blue, to cast light on the back here. And a spot lamp, which is also blue, to cast on the record player. And you can really see here how great of a difference that makes. This is without them, this is with them. To really emphasize this player and make it pop a lot more. So um, yeah, so cheating lighting is completely okay, especially for a scene like this where you want to emphasize a story beat. Um, so don't be afraid to add in lights that shouldn't be there, especially if it helps to amplify uh, a focal point. Um, however, if you go too crazy with it, sometimes it can start to look a little weird, like if it just doesn't match with the rest of the scene. But if it's an artistic choice or kind of a style choice and it feels intentional, you know, then, then it's going to help a lot more to do that. So I've been working on this, uh, this new mansion here, this mansion room, and it's been coming out pretty well. But one thing that I've been having trouble with is lighting the interior, because generally in the past, I would just use a, um, an emission shader for the lights, and I'd just turn it up really bright to lit up the room. And this sort of works. But I was kind of realizing that it's not working so well and watching an Ian Hubert tutorial on this actually kind of cemented in my mind that this is not a great thing to do because it creates so much noise um, when you do that. So um, a workaround I found is to take area lights and make sure they're just parented to your lamp. And... Um, I just put it to the size and shape of the lamp and just put it underneath. And um, I find it just renders a lot quicker and the noise uh, dissipates a lot faster when I do this. But yeah, um, area lamps have saved me and they're so good and uh, you just have a lot more control when you have them. However, uh, the shadows aren't quite as realistic, I've found, when you do this, because this is with the area lamp. This is when you turn up the light bulb shader itself. You can see the shadow of the candle holder goes down the wall. However, um, that is okay, honestly, for a scene like this. So yeah, um, use area lamps. It's definitely a good tip. I strongly advise. Okay, and um, I think I'm going to end this video here because it's getting a little bit longer, but I hope these tips help some of you guys out. It has really helped me for all the stuff I've been doing to use one or two or a mixture of all of these uh, different um, lighting styles. Yeah, and I will see you in the next one.